High blood pressure is known as the silent killer, and oftentimes it has no symptoms. Now new research suggests that women with high blood pressure are at higher risk than their male counterparts for certain disease, prompting researchers to recommend different treatments in women. Here with more is Erin Tolbert, an emergency room nurse practitioner and founder of MidlevelU.com. Erin, good morning. Good morning, Stephanie. Thanks Thank for you. having me. Thank you for being here. So high blood pressure, it's something that a lot of people experience and deal with, but there's a study out that is saying, research is saying that women are having a little bit more difficulty with it than men, right? Yes, exactly. What research has found is that there are actually gender differences when it comes to high blood pressure. We've mm -hmm. kind of always assumed as medical professionals that high blood pressure works the same in men and women, but what this new study shows is that there are actually hormonal differences in how blood pressure is regulated between the genders, and I think it's really going to help us learn a lot more about why more women are dying of heart-related diseases mm -hmm. than men. So what do we do about this then? Well, I think it's very important that women need to pay attention to their blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Women aren't treated um, as appropriately for high blood pressure as men, mm -hmm. so it's really important that early on we start checking our blood pressure. If it's on the high side, we need to do something about it. We need to be proactive about our diet, our exercise. Mm -hmm. We also need to see our doctor if it gets too high to start taking medicines early for it so we can prevent heart-related diseases. So you're saying really watch it, keep an eye on it, and do whatever we can it is to prevent it. Exactly, exactly. And healthy eating is always something I think that kind of goes hand in hand with taking care of yourself, right? It does. Healthy eating and maintaining a healthy weight are so important mm -hmm. when it comes to blood pressure. Diet and exercise are really the foundation not only for high blood pressure but for preventing all kinds mm -hmm. of chronic diseases. Another thing people can do is quit smoking or not smoke at all. It's so important. It really damages the blood vessels and that contributes a lot to high blood pressure as well and so not smoking is really a good key as well. I preach that to my mother all the time. Mm -hmm. Quit smoking, you smoker out there. Um, so what do these findings mean for maybe health care providers then? For health care providers it's very interesting. It means we could start prescribing different medications to women when it comes to high blood pressure mm. than for men. The study was really small so we need a lot more research to kind of figure mm -hmm. this out a little bit further. Mm -hmm. um, but we might start to see women take different blood pressure medicines than men in the future. Interesting. So the study is really significant because there's been a, a decline in cardiovascular disease. Exactly. Well, we've seen that in men. Mm -hmm. Men over the past 20 years have experienced um, a decline in the amount of heart disease, whereas mm -hmm. women it's really remained steady or even increased slightly. Mm -hmm. And that's what really prompted this study in the first place is why is this happening mm -hmm. and why are we seeing this? And what we've seen is there are differences in how the body works mm -hmm. between the genders and it's not really been explored before. Now, is this all women? Are, this, are we targeting certain age groups here? Should, should everyone kind of be alert to this? It is all women, but particularly postmenopausal women. We okay. see the most effect after the age of 65. That's really when those hormonal changes start to take mm -hmm. place. Um, and also, just as the body ages, you're more likely to get high blood pressure in the first place. So older women need to be especially careful to mm -hmm. watch their high blood pressure, see your doctor, see your nurse practitioner when it starts to creep up so that you can get it treated appropriately. And how important, Erin, is it to just kind of get the word out about this and just raise awareness about it? It's so important. Like you mentioned before, high blood pressure is a silent killer. Mm -hmm. It usually has no symptoms until it gets very, very bad. Mm -hmm. And so if you can be proactive, every time you go to the pharmacy or get your groceries, just uh, use the high blood pressure or the blood pressure monitor at the pharmacy and just give it a quick check, write it down, mm -hmm. record it, bring it to your next doctor's visit, let them take a look at it. It's really nice to have a lot of readings to look at instead of just the one you take at the doctor's office when you might mm -hmm. be nervous. Mm -hmm. um, and that'll help you kind of keep an eye on it, okay. look at the trends in your blood pressure, and make sure it's not creeping up as you get older. And so you are founder of MidlevelU.com. Tell us about your website. Um, my website is really a resource for nurse practitioners and physician assistants, okay. which are collectively known as mid-level medical uh -huh. providers. Um, we offer information about education, how do you find which school you want to go to, um, to issues you experience in your career, especially mm -hmm. like how is health care reform affecting nurse practitioners. So we really strive to be a resource for the whole um, nurse practitioner and physician assistant community. So you're really kind of raising awareness that way yes. too. Um, Midlevelu.com. Erin is also a family nurse practitioner as well. Yes. So what is it uh, at the end of the day that you really want to let people know about taking care of their, themselves, not just with high blood pressure, but just in general? Yes. I think like I mentioned, mentioned earlier, um, diet and exercise are so important. Mm -hmm. If you can maintain a healthy weight through diet and exercise, you can prevent so many chronic medical problems. Mm -hmm. And it's never too late. If you already have medical problems, 
it's not too late. Start eating healthier. Mm -hmm. Start getting out, going on walks. It's a little bit hard in the winter mm -hmm. time, but here in Florida, it's a little <laughs> bit easier. I think that yeah. too is a lot of you know a lot of people think, oh, I've been doing this for so long. This has right. been my routine for so long. So you know, why bother with it now? But it really can make a difference. It does. It does at all stages of life. Well, midlevelu.com. Erin, thank you so much. Thank you for thank being you. here. Coming up next, comfortable shoes that are making everyone happy. How you can slip your feet into happy feet. That's coming up next.